Intermediate Algebra, Section 1. This is just an overview of some basics here. Algebra is dealing with a variable, and we're often called to translate algebraic expressions. I have some key words here that indicate specific operations, and let's do a little bit of practice here. They're asking us to translate an algebraic expression example, 7 more than x. This one, because it's addition, the order is not as important. I can add in either order, either x plus 7 or 7 plus x. 5 less than y, it's a less than, which indicates a subtraction. And subtraction, just like division, order is important. 5 less than y. Twice w, if you look under the multiplication, twice is there, implying two times. The next example, the product of 4 and n. Product is a result of a multiplication. So I'm going to take 4 and times it by n. The variable right next to the number is implying multiplication. In the last example, the sum of x and y. Sum is the result of an addition problem. So a representation algebraically would be x plus y. Mathematicians are basically lazy, and so we go to exponential notation. And here we have a times a times a times a continuing practice of multiplication of a's. There are n factors. This in exponential notation would be a to the nth power. Specifically, if we have s to the second power, sometimes we read this as s squared because of the area application. This in expanded notation means s times s. If we have x to the third power, sometimes we call this x cubed, this in expanded form is x times x times x. Any number is understood to be to the first power. So m to the first power is just simply m. So just a little review on exponential notation. We'll deal more with exponents later in this chapter. The foundation of any math, regardless of what type it is, is based on the rule for order of operations. And our first order of operations is grouping symbols. Anything inside the parentheses, perhaps. And we work from the innermost symbol out. This could be parentheses. It could be the braces or brackets. Even a division line acts like a grouping symbol. Next, we will do any exponents or powers, perhaps you've heard it. Next priority is multiplication and division. They have equal priority. And so how do we decide? It is left to right. And the last operation that we will perform to simplify a numerical expression is addition and subtraction. And to do that, we'll do the same thing, left to right. And to illustrate that, here's an example that I have. Given the expression x squared plus 5x, and I'll give you a value of x in a minute, but if we kind of talk our way through this ahead of time, we have a power, we have addition, we have multiplication. There are no grouping symbols, so the number one priority is out. But here's our top priority with the operations given. We'll do the power. We'll skip over addition. We'll jump to multiplication, and then we'll add. So now, if they ask us to simplify this following the order of operations, and they give us that x is equal to a negative 3, we will replace the variable with that given value and then follow the game plan that we just devised. Powers first, negative 3 times negative 3, and negative times a negative is a positive. 
skip the addition, we'll multiply. A positive times a negative is a negative. 5 times 3 is 15. And then we're going to add. The larger one is negative, and the difference is 6 when we add a positive and a negative number. If the problem is 4y minus 2x quantity squared, and they tell us that x is equal to a negative 2, and y is equal to a 4, order of operations, we have a multiplication, a subtraction, a multiplication within parentheses, and then an exponent. The priority is here to do the multiplication first because of the parentheses, then we'll square, multiply, and finally we will do the subtraction. So we've got our game plan following the order of operations, replacing the variables with their value. I almost wrote y again. I'm putting parentheses around that minus 2, and I probably should turn that into a brace. And it's just more for visual clarity. We have 2 times negative 2. Our priority is simplifying inside the parentheses first. So we have a positive times a negative is a negative. And yes, we could simplify this. It's not going to alter anything, but I'll hold on for a minute. Multiplying, we've got our negative 4. Next priority is the exponent or the power. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Leave the subtraction. Going to the multiplication, we have a 16. And finally, 16 minus 16 gives us 0. When we're dealing with numbers, we oftentimes need to examine the type of numbers that are using. So we'll define these numbers. I'm sure you've seen these before, but we'll dust off the differences. Natural numbers or counting numbers are the numbers we're first introduced to, starting with 1, 2, 3, and continuing infinitely, indicated with the ellipsis here, the three dots. The only difference between the natural and whole numbers is the digits 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, and continuing on. The integers are the signed numbers. You know, think about as you progress through elementary school how we were introduced to these numbers. We don't, at least as small children, understand the concept of negative numbers, so we're talking about infinitely smaller with nothing past the decimal, so we're talking numbers like negative 2 and negative 1 on up into the whole and then natural numbers. Before I identify rational and so on, the remaining three here, I'm going to jump to the back side of our notes sheet. And I need to do a little bit of defining here. We have something called roster notation. And that's what I used for those first three number sets. A roster notation is simply a list of elements. Whereas a set builder notation looks like the following. They have a bracket, x, vertical line, which is read such that, and then there's some kind of rule here. x is a number between 1 and 5. And it can be whatever. It can be an inequality. It can be a written description like this. Either one of those is going to do the trick. And then, now that we have those two, I'm going to go back and finish off the rest of the list for sets of numbers here. The next one is rational numbers, and it's defined using that set builder notation, p over q. It's the set of numbers, p over q, such that p and q are integers, and q is not equal to 0. Let's look at some examples of rational numbers. What are we talking about? Rational numbers can be 
fractions for that matter, and not always the case. So we end up with 5 eighths We end up with 5 eighths. I thought my computer was shutting down on me, so sorry about that. Would be an example. These are integers. Uh, we can come up with the decimal equivalency, 0.625. We could have an improper fraction, and it could be negative. It's meeting this definition here. They're integers, so a negative 12 sevenths would work. Uh, we could put 0 over 6, which would simplify to a 0. That would meet the definition. And for that matter, 39 could be considered a rational number because, although we wouldn't write it this way very often, we can express it as a ratio, 39 over 1. One thing to note about rational numbers is that they either terminate or repeat. What do I mean by that? I had the decimal equivalency here of 5 eighths the rational number. This decimal terminates. It stops. When you do the division, 5 divided by 8, it stops. If I have the rational number 1 -third, and I look for the decimal equivalency, I'm going to take the numerator divided by the denominator. When you do the division, you end up with 0.33333, and it continues on repeating. This number is clearly part of the rational number system, which leads us to the next set of numbers, irrational numbers are numbers that neither terminate nor repeat. This is a special class of numbers, and let me give you some examples of irrational numbers. The classic one, perhaps, your thinking is pi, and even though initially it looks like a rational number, when you convert 22 sevenths into a decimal, this number never sets up a pattern, nor does it ever terminate. We often will think of pi as 3.14, but if you did the division, there's not an end or a pattern to be found. Another example of an irrational number is the square root of 2. Most of you are probably familiar with square root of 4, which is 2, square root of 9, which is 3, square root of 100, which is 10, but square root of 2, if you try this on your calculator, you get a 1.71, so on. This falls under the category of irrational number because it does not terminate nor repeat. Square root of 3 would be another example of, a of an irrational number. Negative square root of 5, having the negative out in front, would be an example of an irrational number. Our last set of numbers, then, is the real numbers. And these are all the numbers that we've just talked about. It is, I'm going to use the set builder notation, x such that x is rational or irrational. It contains all of the set of numbers that we previously defined. So let's look at some examples of classifying them and practicing using roster and set builder notation. In this first example on the second page here of the class notes, it says use roster notation to name the set of positive integers less than 6. So we're dealing with positive, so we won't go below 0, or include 0 for that matter, which is neither positive nor negative, but we want the integers that are less than 6. We want roster notation 
the smallest one would be one, two, three, four, and five. That's our representation of this description in roster notation. In number two, it asks us to use set builder notation to name the set of all real numbers greater than two. And to show all the numbers greater than two, we'll start with our bracket, the set of all x such that, and to represent greater than two, we could write that out, or I can use the inequality with the greater than sign to represent the value or set of numbers that we're describing here. In the last example here, number three asks us to name all the numbers from this set, and here in roster they have all the set, all the numbers that we're to take under consideration that are natural numbers. Think about the first numbers that you were introduced to, and the only number listed there that qualifies as a natural number is 10. Whole numbers, the only difference between natural and whole numbers is zero, and that is one of our choices. So zero and 10 would fall under the category of whole numbers. Next is asking us integers. Those are our sign numbers. So we would have negative 10, not the radical, not the fraction, but we would have our zero. You can include the negative five and the 10. And by the way, you can put these in any order. I'm just going from left to right. Rational numbers, all of these numbers qualify as rational numbers. So they will be in the list. And then we can include that fraction. Negative two and three fourths is a rational number. And the definition of a rational number was the set of all p over q. Well, we can convert this mixed number into an improper fraction by taking the denominator 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 gives us 11 fourths, and it's a negative. So it looks more like a rational number, at least according to the definition. Irrational numbers are numbers that do not repeat and do not terminate, and they're those special ones. It's the pi and the radical or square roots of numbers that we can't simplify to a integer answer, and the only special one that falls under that is the square root of five. F asks for all real numbers, and since all real numbers are all of these, it will be all of the numbers. That is the end of section 1.1.